Hello fellow filmmakers, today we are talking about something so important which is pitching, pitching your project. All right, so I mean there's a few elements to pitching aren't there? Uh, we're going to be talking about the pitch video which yep. is sometimes called the teaser. Or a sizzle. Sizzle reel. Yeah. I like pitch video, you know, because it's yep. just really clear what it's designed to do. It is for pitching and realising your project. But often it doesn't stop there because if you've created a successful proposal and pitch video, it will lead to a face-to-face -face meeting or maybe a video meeting these days. So we're also going to be touching on that. So let's kick it off. Like, you've made a lot of different pitch videos over the years. What do you think the most important part of a pitch video is? Oh, look, you know, my observations on this one are that um, less is more with a pitch video. Um, it's, it's really easy to think that if you make a longer pitch video, it's going to be more compelling or more convincing. They only have a limited amount of time to spend absorbing the information you're giving them initially. Down the track, they might have more time for you to watch something longer, but initially I'd be trying to keep the pitch video short and sweet and very high production. And value. when you say short, what do you mean? I mean oh, under two minutes. Oh, okay. Really yeah. short. Yeah, really short. And so I cut you off. You were saying high production value. So what's your clarify? Just to clarify, what do you clarify as high production value? Uh, so high production value is anything that you can throw at your pitch video that makes it cinematic, that makes it feel like it's going to jump off the screen. So I would definitely say in documentary film that you don't want too many what we call talking heads, which is just people being interviewed on camera. I would favour for a pitch video just having really great persuasive short grabs from people who seem charismatic as they're saying those things that you can chunk together to give a sense of the whole. Not tell the whole story, just give a sense of where this thing's going. Then overlay that with as much footage as you can get that is really powerful or cinematic or high production value, meaning, you know, drone shots or mm. moving camera shots or shallow depth of field or I'm really feeling the emotion in the frame, you know, and putting all of those elements together, often at a high tempo, which will really inform the type of music or musical selections that you make. They're often going to be really punchy. Um, in terms of making really fantastic pitch videos, I often look to the films of Christopher Nolan because I find that the trailers that he makes for his films often have this really driving, intense music. It really helps you get into the visuals. And because it's so punchy, you can hammer a lot of visual information. And it also gives you a tempo to know how many short sound bites that you get in there. So the whole experience of it is a bit of a spectacle. Um, but at the end of it, you feel like, wow, I'm really engaged. I'm really interested. I want to know what those people have to say. And that looked amazing. That's the type of impression I'm trying to leave. And so for someone who's just getting their film off the ground, they might not have any finance yet. If you're right at the beginning and you've got your proposal done, but you really haven't done much filming, so you don't have much visual elements, can you use stock footage? I would advise against it. The issue with stock footage may be that it starts feeling a little generic. So I think you'd need to be... Um, pretty selective in the type of stock footage you use. And I'm a big believer with documentary film in just get out there and pick up a camera and point a camera at something because you don't need to tell the whole story. You just need to find enough to fill your 90 to 120 seconds in a really compelling way. So I'd be more encouraging you guys to get out there with a camera and, and really start immersing yourself in the story world, just for short shoots, manageable things that you can get out there and capture the essence of the story you're trying to tell. Bottle up that essence and deliver it in a pitch video that's really persuasive. So you've got a great proposal, which you can jump back to the last episode if you wanna know how to create the great proposal. Yeah. So you've got that, you've got your really compelling 90 second to two minute, really high production value pitch video that really succinctly shares the vision for your film. You've put these two things together, you've sent them to a potential investor or funder and they want a meeting. 
oh yeah, and that's I want to meet what you. You're looking for. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the holy grail in the you know development and financing part of the process of filmmaking is getting that meeting. You've achieved it. You know that is exactly what you're hoping for. Now you've got an opportunity to bring it and also respond to what that person might be interested in. So I think the first thing I would say about the pitch meeting is bring heaps of energy you know you, they're going to feed off your enthusiasm so you want to be so passionate about your subject matter but you also want to be listening really carefully because mm. you want to give them an opportunity to respond to the film that you're pitching and to respond to the topic that they're interested in so that you can tailor your messaging a bit to what they might be interested in because you know films cover a lot of ground they are highly nuanced uh, not everything about your film may be of interest to them. Not everything about your film needs to be of interest to them. But the bit that is interesting to them, you want to focus on in that pitch meeting and make the meeting all about that. So what tips can you share on that? Because I think it's a bit nerve wracking when you go to meet a funder because you've, you, you've put so much into this film idea and you want to get it financed and you can really you know go into these meetings thinking everything's on the line which can create a lot of pressure how do you overcome those nerves and actually be present in the meeting to answer the questions that they have oh look first smile have a laugh be human you know have a coffee you know relate to them as a human to human and then i would start with why are you passionate about telling this story and just let your passion loose for not too long you know like don't go on and on and on you know but for a couple of minutes talk about why you're passionate and then i would flip it and say and what why are you interested in this topic and that gives you the opportunity to listen and hear them respond and hopefully they're feeding off your energy at that point point. and now you're into a dialogue where they're saying things and you're responding and the energy builds and you're finding synergies that you may not have known about before you went into that meeting, value that you can deliver to them, but things that they're interested in that you may not have known about. And would you take anything to the meeting with you? Like, would you take your laptop or your iPad with the trailer loaded up to show them again in the meeting? Or would you have your proposal printed out to hand to them? Or would you take anything with you? I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but whenever you need to show a video and use someone else's IT or infrastructure, tap into their TV, you know, hotspot to it or whatever, something goes wrong, you know, and that is just an absolute vibe killer in a meeting. So I think if you're going to run something for them, bring it on a device that, you know, you know, I can just hit play and put it in front of them. Sometimes even a phone is really good for that. And I was just going to say, if you're meeting in a coffee shop, which does happen, take headphones that they can also listen to the video on as well. So true, yeah. Or if you're pitching at a conference or something. And not earbuds, yeah. like headphones that they feel comfortable actually. Yeah, oh, not earbuds, no, yeah. no one wants you know, to share earbuds. No, nah. so I think possibly that type of device, but you also don't want to be stuck in a device and looking like you're distracted or like you're on your phone. It's got to be all about the human connection, you to them. So use a device sparingly and probably only for showing a pitch video and I would leave it at that. I agree with you, the sound's really important, so you need to bring headphones along with you, no noise cancelling headphones that they can comfortably listen to it on. And I would bring a, p a piece of paper, meaning your proposal. Yeah, I would definitely bring the proposal. Yeah. I realise that it's going to be much more than one piece of paper, but a really nicely presented, well printed, colour proposal that you can leave with them at the end. Again, I wouldn't be spending too much time looking at that proposal and reading from that proposal because it, that's taking you out of the interaction. So it's more something that you give to them to leave behind. Or they may gravitate to it. You might find they're flipping through it yep. to get some context. But again, I don't think that's necessarily great either. You're not asking for a meeting for them to critique a written proposal. You're asking for a meeting so you can connect to them person to person. All right, so you've got your fantastic proposal, your awesome pitch video, you've got the meeting, you've got your piece of paper, you've got your video lined up with your headphones, you've got your enthusiasm, you've got everything. The hardest bit's coming up. What's the hardest bit? The hardest bit is you need to ask them for something. At the end, you've got, you, to, ask them for you've money. got to be brave enough to ask them for what you need and you cannot leave that meeting without asking them for that thing you may never get this opportunity again. So at the right moment, you need to bravely go forward and say, to achieve this, 
to realize this vision, to make this film, from you, I need this thing. And it's tough because often that thing is investment, it's money. You're asking someone for money, but they knew that going into the meeting and you've got to go there. And it's really important you go there in the meeting so that you can have a discussion about that side of it, whether that's affordable to them, what they would get out of that, where are they going to derive value from that type of investment, asking you some of the harder questions about how your film is going to reach your proposed audience, etc. They're natural conversations to have us after you ask someone for money or investment. And you got to be ready to answer those questions as well. Yeah, so I think one thing with the asking for money bit is you've got to know how much you need to realise your film. And if that amount is way more than that funder can afford to contribute, you need to be able to respond to that. So say, I don't know, making up numbers, say you say to the funder, I need $100,000 to realise my film. And they say, oh, that's about three times our budget. You can go, that's okay. Because if you can meet 30% of my total budget, I already have interest from X, Y and Z or I'm approaching these other groups and I can put the budget together through a finance plan from these resources. Yeah. But if you just kind of go blank face and go, oh, then that's not going to give them confidence that you can find the money elsewhere. So you you do need to have a strategy in place for how you're going to fully finance and realise your film. Yeah, look, you know, I think all filmmakers, you know, sort of need to be business people in some way as well because you do need to finance your projects you know and part of that will come into investment discussions so having those types of approaches up your sleeve like what you just said partial financing is great another one you could say is would you consider funding the project over two financial periods there's all types of ways that you can keep that conversation going and you want to keep that conversation going so any other points to pitch meetings that could be helpful to our audience not everyone's going to say yes to your pitch and that's okay. Don't let it demoralize you. Your job is to actually find the right partners for your project and connect to them. They're gonna be the best partnerships you can have. They're gonna be fruitful. And if it's a successful film, you'll probably find that you end up making other films with their support and that's great. Don't feel demoralized if you get a no. You know, you've bravely gone out there Pitch your project with all of the enthusiasm you can, with all of your creative brilliance. And not everyone's going to say yes, but when they do, it is going to be the greatest feeling. Hang in there. So hopefully that's given you some confidence about how to get your pitch video together and how to get in front of a funder and what to do once you actually get that all important meeting or hopefully a number of important meetings. We are going to be back next week with more on how to develop your documentary project. So please make sure you subscribe and we'll see you again next week.